Welcome to the channel, That Retired Guy. Now I have some exciting news for you today, so hold on to your seats. It's going to be a wild ride. Hello, my name is Daryl, and I'm That Retired Guy. You know what they say, money can't buy happiness, but it sure can buy tractors. And as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, I'm talking about real farm tractors. I mean, it's a beast. My son and I bought an old Massey Ferguson 165 diesel tractor. You know, the one with a loader bucket and cool PTO attachments. Now, for all you city slickers, PTO means power takeoff. We're talking 50 horsepower at the takeoff and a Perkins diesel putting out about 60 horsepower for plowing fields. Okay, okay, I know at this point I'm probably losing all my followers of the female persuasion. I know you're thinking, yeah, yeah, boys toys. What's it with you guys? Don't boys ever grow up? Well, I'm that retired guy now, and I guess not. <laughs> I remember my better half uh, giving dating advice to our two young sons, and she would say, now remember when you're on a date, don't start talking about cars. Girls don't care about cars. Well, I'm guessing the same is true about tractors. But hang on now, don't change the channel just yet. There's more to the story than just tractor talk. So let me back up a bit and give you the rest of the story. Now, cast your mind back, it's 2020, and we're in the middle of this pandemic, which, of course, never seems to end. Uh, the cities are locked down, the stores are closed, schools are closed, our grandkids can't even play outside. My granddaughter uh, was taking riding lessons and actually had to lease a horse just to finish her classes. You know, she could then be an owner. Um, things are pretty crazy. Now, my wife and I, we're watching the price of food and, and basic essentials going through the roof. Remember, you couldn't even buy toilet paper back then. We're stuck in the house watching YouTube, seeing how the cities are turning into these war zones with protests and looting and burning buildings. I mean, we started thinking, wouldn't it be great just to get away from all this? Try to be a little more self-sufficient. You know, free to breathe fresh air and live on our own terms. You know, get back to the land. And it was George Washington who once said, I'd rather be on a farm than be emperor of the world. And he spoke from experience. Now, I'm not saying we plan to become farmers, but to be honest, we've been watching a lot of those homesteading uh, YouTubers. Yeah, maybe even a few of those preppers. <laughs> uh, that's what lockdown life will do to you. Now, we just want to escape the craziness of the big city and, and grow and preserve some of our own food. Uh, yeah, my granddaughter wants her own horse. Um, yeah, I mean, see what these crazy lockdown rules have done. Anyway, this past winter, we bought a five-acre plot of land, and uh, with my son's family here in Ontario, we plan to build a Dutton Ranch. Now, I don't know if I ever mentioned before, but that's my last name. Oh, yeah, and my middle name, it's John. Yeah, John Dutton. No, I'm not talking about that Kevin Costner Yellowstone imitation. I mean the real McCoy. Or should I say the real Dutton Ranch? Yeah, right here on the Canadian frontier. Now, them five acres, that's the place to be. Farm living, that's the life for me. Land spreading out so far and wide. You can keep the city, just give me that countryside. <laughs> of course, any of you who know uh, my wife, Deborah, would probably expect her to sing Eva Gabor's line. The big city's where I'd rather stay. I don't walk on grass or hay. I just abhor the smell of poo. Darling, I love you, but give me Park Avenue. <laughs> well, that was then, and this is now. We're, we're pandemic weary, and we're going up the country. Just like the group Canned Heat sang back in Woodstock in 1969. I'm going to leave this city. Got to get away. Well, all the fussing and fighting, man, I sure can't stay. So as my mother used to say, uh, we're starting another grand adventure. Now for her, it didn't matter what it was. If it was something new or different, then it was another grand adventure. Uh, well, Mom, you'd love this one. She used to tell me the stories about how her parents moved to a farm after her mom actually lost a knitting mill in the uh, Great Depression. Uh, that's how they made it through the tough times. Now my granddaughter would love to hear Mom's stories about Danny Boy, the horse, or other stories about her farm life on the, in the 1930s. Now, even though we're moving to the country, my granddaughter, she's going to be happy to know that the Dutton Ranch is only about 20 miles away from that Royal Canadian Mounted Police training grounds and stables. So in 1873, the uh, Northwest Mounted Police, as they were called then, 
they patrolled Canada on horseback. Now, as a tribute to that, they do the uh, musical ride every year, and uh, the division trains right here in Ottawa. Now, maybe my granddaughter will carry on the tradition from our new homestead, the Dutton Ranch. But I get ahead of myself. Building the ranch is just in the early stages. So uh, stay tuned for other videos. Um, we're going to try and chronicle the uh, journey. Uh, but for now, let's get back to what's most important about all this. Did I mention we bought a tractor? Now you got to understand that my son and I are just a couple of city slickers. Yeah, our kids were born and raised in Alberta, and we had friends in the farming community. But at that time, my career was in the oil business. You know, that thing that gave Canada its economy that we all enjoy. Anyway, in uh, my mind, tractors were always the coolest part of country living. So it'd be no surprise that once we decided to move to the country, a tractor was in the cards. Now, what are we going to do with it? Well, the land needs to be cleared. There's lots of small trees and brush. Uh, it needs to be plowed and leveled. And of course, once we get horses, uh, that is plural, you've got to have at least two. Uh, otherwise, that's cruel. Uh, we'll be shoveling manure. Uh, that's right, sweetie. Poo. <laughs> now, what kind of tractor do we need? Well, a big one, of course. Now, we're not big, wealthy, uh, industrial farming family. Uh, we can't afford those fancy self-driving GPS-linked machines. Um, we need something uh, really cheap, reliable, easy to fix. Uh, so we started the search for a vintage tractor, uh, one that you can still get parts for. One that's got a good track record, a performance, and uh, one that'll be cheap to maintain. Now, from my research, that uh, last point, you know, cheap to maintain, that pretty much eliminated all those green tractors out there. Parts and service for those things, that's the highest cost in the country. Uh, so that left us looking for red tractors. Now, I came across this uh, guide to tractor shopping on uh, one of the farming chat rooms. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's come to that. <laughs> anyway, with the, my recent shopping experience, I can say there's a lot of truth to this. For example, the uh, first one, parts tractor, means uh, beyond repair. They actually call them salvage on many of the farming sites. Or no time to restore. You can find out the parts just don't even exist. Now, go ahead and uh, pause the video so you can uh, read and uh, have a bit of a chuckle. So that pretty much sums up my uh, tractor shopping experience. Uh, in the end, we did settle on a 1969 red tractor um, that was for sale across the border in Quebec. Now, my son and I, we drive out there to have a look and we make a deal to buy it um, from Michelle. Now, Michelle is a great guy. He was really helpful. Came along actually even with the trucking company. He loaded it up, uh, unloaded it for us, and even gave us our uh, first lessons on how to operate it. Big thanks to Michelle. Now we are the uh, proud owners of a Massey Ferguson 165 with an attached loader and multiple attachments. A snow blower, of course you got to have that in northern Ontario. Um, a bush hog for cutting grass and weeds and small brushes. Uh, a grader blade and a forestry winch. Now what we're going to do with this uh, beast, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, it's meant for pulling logs and trees out of the bush and we don't even have a bush. Uh, so now we've got a tractor. So it's time to get to work. The first thing to do is we're going to cut an access road into the property. Now we've bought one of these uh, temporary garages that uh, we can store the equipment in, you know, keep it out of the rain and the snow. So we got to clear a spot for it and, uh, and put that up. Now I don't know if you can see the uh, previous landowner had uh, cleared the land probably about 20 years ago or so, left it in giant furrows, uh, long mounds of dirt that since overgrown with uh, weeds and bushes. Now we've been having a hard time leveling the ground. So if any of you out there are having suggestions on how we might clear and level the, uh, the whole five acres, uh, it'd be much appreciated. Just uh, jot down your ideas in the uh, comments section below. Of course, for uh, most of the people watching, uh, that retired guy, there's a good chance that you have no idea how to do that. <laughs> now I watch YouTubers all the time and they're telling me, comment down below. Well, what's down below my TV is the floor. So it turns out you can only comment if you're watching this on a computer. And of course, that's not common practice for us uh, seniors. Anyway, I digress. So the best idea we could come up with was to uh, plow out those hills and ruts. Well, as you might expect, the one implement that did not come with our package deal 
was a plow. Now I'm on the hunt for a two bottom mold board plow. Uh, you see farming has its own set of jargon. New words for the Duttons. Well now just in the last few days you can see that we are now the proud owner of our first plow. It's a Ferguson plow made before I was born but this thing is built like a brick well, you know what I mean. And it's uh, going to be around for the next depression or pandemic or apocalypse or whatever. I mean, this thing is a solid machine. So, off to work we go. So, as you can see, we've got our work cut out for us. Dutton Ranch right now is mostly just architect sketches and lumpy land. But uh, stay tuned and follow that retired guy as we turn this dream into a reality. And as a quick heads up from a grandson, Jeff Foxworthy says, you might be a redneck if on your first date, you have to ask your dad to borrow the keys to the tractor. Now remember everyone, till the next time we meet, live your best life.